You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 77 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. I am Brian. And I'm Joey. That was not a normal start. I know, but sometimes you just got to mix it up. You got to make it a little different. I don't know. Um, So come on along with us on this journey. This this wonderful thing we call (laughs) a podcast where we we talk. I I don't know. I tried to be fancy. How much beer have you had already? Uh, Just a little bit, (laughs) but I've had a long day. Um, We talk about gravel bikes, adventure bikes, bike packing, and general all around bike fun. We rarely talk about any of that. Yeah, we do. No, actually, we do. We spend a lot (laughs) of time talking about that. I, I think we do a pretty good job. I think we do an okay job. Yeah. Our listeners seem to think so. All three or four of them. So, maybe, I, I think maybe we three. do okay. Anything going on? As, speaking of <laughs> <laughs> new support, have we got any this week? Uh, air, t- air temperatures and water temperatures are on the rise, and fish throughout the state are you're, moving you're reading the towards wrong, the summer. Oh. <laughs> you're reading the wrong oh, podcast. That show <laughs> That's a nice um, crossover, though. Yeah, Thank thanks. you, Joey, for that. <laughs> Um, uh, fish are moving into their summertime patterns, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a supporter from, oh man, we sniped one out of a uh, two chains, uh, mm-hmm. pod, uh, yes, their sir. Grand Rapids, Michigan, yep. uh, old Chuck. Chuck sent us a cool email too. I can't oh, wait to, yeah. It's right, a, Charles, it's a, it's I actually got to mail those out. It is. I haven't sent the t-shirt either yet. Oh, um, dang. We should have collaborated and that should We just don't stay in touch. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that, Chuck. It'll go out in the morning. Yes, and sir. You should get all of that. I'll mail it out with my HOA check. And, oh, Do you think oh. I should mail my HOA people some stickers? <laughs> you probably should. <laughs> some love you, know, you buys. Sometimes I put love you buys on the mail that I have to send out. Like uh-huh. you send in a bill yeah. or something. I just slap a love you buy. <laughs> uh, uh, what, are, what are we drinking over there tonight? You threw something my way. Yeah. What is this? Uh, we're what getting you this? into the IPAs. Um, this is a Sierra Nevada hazy little thing IPA. Now, how would you characterize this IPA? Because I well, am new. I'm not one of those beer snobs. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, there's some people. It's like drinking wine. Like, oh, you know, it's got a little. I know. Business. I know. We don't want to do that. Um, but as you character, it's um, it's got an after note of of. <laughs> it, it tastes good as beer. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is, as as a regular guy drinker of an IPA. Yeah. I mean, is this it's super not, hoppy? Is this? I don't like, know. I don't feel like it's super hoppy. So okay. I think it's like a competition. I think everyone says it to be yeah. like the hoppiest beer, uh-huh. and I think it's on the lighter side. Okay, it's, um, and it comes. It's the kind of IPA where it's not overdone. It's it's pretty good after you're outside for a while. Okay, I, I think you it. get some IPAs are just like, oh, like you know, you get those times where like a Land Shark or Corona mm-hmm. or Coors, like you get done outside and that's and just like a good beer, but it's yeah. such a shitty beer. Yeah, but yeah. I'm 30. I'm not going to buy that beer anymore. Right. Like this is the kind of the substitute for that. So what is it I've it's seen? a lighter IPA for me. Who is that makes the um, uh, all day IPA? Who does that? Oh, I've seen that recently. I've seen commercials for that where they talk about. It's like 4% or something. I, I don't know. I, I Yeah. But it's something, there's something different about it. So oh, I'm not going to shout because of this. Um, I was going to ask Jess. I think at my <laughs> in-laws Saturday, we had uh, um, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law were big on like the lights. And Jess might yell down and correct me. We had like this yingling light. And they were all like competition of the light beers. Oh, good grief. And her her brother and my other brother-in-law are like we're both like the nice... Uh, craft beer so we're just like uh, it tastes like literally tastes like water with that beer flavor like (laughs) O'Doul's what was the um, that nasty um, blue moon light sky or something uh, anything blue moon no no no, blue moon tastes like a permanent can we're not going back there again but this is this is okay I I I said it's a good for me for my flavor my palate it's like me and Jess were outside I was you know I worked all day I was Mm -hmm. out kayaking cleaning my boat it's just a good refreshing. It's I do like a hoppier one, but I don't want to go super hardcore. Now, see, that's what doesn't. I think I think you have to step into the hoppy. Yeah, this is this would be the beer that's like work your way into IPAs. Okay, I okay. do have a really good one from Dogfish Head, that Grateful Dead IPA. Mm-hmm. I got one can left of that. Oh, don't give it to me. That is not the kind of IPA I, for you. Yeah, I don't appreciate them enough at this point in the game. <laughs> so I'm still on the whole like no. the double cannon citrusy IPA thing. <laughs> 
That's kind of uh, like a good. That's a good yeah. stepping stone kind of thing. So that, that's what I was more curious about. As um, I was, as you had had given me this beer and I was tasting it, I just wanted to get sort of like your perspective on where it stood on the spectrum, so spectrum. to speak. I yeah. really, I wanted some more sours. That's why I wasn't getting more beer until I finished this twelve pack. Lasted like three weeks. That's why when you pulled that that box out, I was like, "Oh, give me one of those," because I thought that's what you had. Oh, I want one of those, those lime. It was like lime sea salt bullshit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. I that yeah. could be a trouble because you get to drink all those really yeah. quickly. Yeah. They're yeah. just. Yeah. It. There's something about it just like clenches your thirst. So now you're wearing tonight. You're you're wearing your trash panda. Yeah. I can show you the world, t-shirt and. Uh, did you you discovered where that came from? Right? I um, you got some. I thing? discovered the meaning of it and where it came from in the last couple of days. <laughs> so you want to pass along? Anything? So uh, my friend and uh, fellow listener Theodore, everyone knows Ted. Thank you, Ted. If you don't know Ted, you haven't listened to us up you enough know episodes, right? Um, there's certain ones like you know, there's there's Ted. Ted's and there, there's there's Larry. a lot of good people. Yeah. I don't call them out Justin. There's a there's a you know we're gonna not Frankie. say someone are gonna take offense. I know. You know. All of our, you know who you are. Let's yeah, say. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, we'll have one of these IPAs with you soon. So um, we had a question. Speaking of Ted, can I interrupt you for a minute? Yeah. He had a video. Did you see his video where he the went turtle? to turtle? Yeah, where he went to race his motorcycle, and like there was a turtle trying to cross the motorcycle track. Yeah, little turtle. And he like did a whole big stoppage <laughs> and moved the track at a video. It was funny. <laughs> I, I couldn't have loved that anymore. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh no. Know. So Ted messaged me and he's like. I forgot what he said. Basically, I found out Ted sent me the shirt. He's like, I asked, did he? Yeah, he referred I knew. to his wife. I think he referred to you as my wife as a joke. Oh, it could be. Um, could be. And then it wasn't until like two days ago. I was like, well, he, he messaged, clicked. He what, messaged me a long time ago about that shirt. Yeah, he said it took a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I wasn't going to spill the beans because if he didn't send anything no, in the package, I thought wasn't. he was trying to be coy. But so I finally got the Aladdin reference not long ago. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, there's a, there's a, a possum and a raccoon. If you haven't seen it, I, I did put the picture on Instagram on the GTD account. I did wear it to um, work today, too. So it's got a possum and a raccoon on, and they're dressed up like Aladdin, and they're on a magic carpet, and the words say, I can show you some trash. I was just like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> like, yeah, but why would you get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny. It wasn't like, eh. Now it's really funny. <laughs> when you know, like, the context of it. And I'm like... Because I even said there's, like, a dude in the carpet. He's got, like, a... I, yeah. on his head. I, I thought you got it right away. Nope. Because I even I think that night I even sang the I can show you some Did, trash no. and didn't didn't click no, at all. That's that's what well. working in the bike industry right now does to you. Well, no, also I have kids that over the age that Aladdin that was like oh, in I their mean, wheelhouse. Yeah, I was I'm thirty when Aladdin came out, like I was a, like I was the prime yeah, uh, okay. viewing audience of that. Okay. That's why so, it was a dumb movie. Um I did you know Robin Williams is good in it. As a as a genie, yeah, it was about you it. know that, that 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 about doesn't mean. Hey, I'm excited to be back on my Roubaix. Thank you very much for making that happen. Uh, you know what I didn't do? What besides a lot? Because I was more like, oh shit, I'll get the wheels. Yeah, Did you, that BB was still in there. I know. <laughs> I've I left like, it in there. I, I was think like, it, you know, it's a thing now. It, it gives me comfort. No, I, well, at first I put everything on hold because of the wheels, and I think he told me to rip it all apart at one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other day I got him like, oh, I'm just gonna throw the wheels on it. Yeah, we were we Sorry. were gonna totally break it down. And yeah, and I put everything on hold when the yeah. wheels were breaking. And That's then, okay. That's okay. Man, we got in a small window. Those wheels are gone again. Really? Like Ugh. they? I mean, there was like a two day window to get stuff like that. Everyone's throwing out item watches because it's a solid set of wheels. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So sorry. Keep going. No, 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 that's okay. That's, that's what I wanted I to mean, talk about. I'm just excited to be back on the Rubik. I feels saw good. you on it multiple it, times. Yeah, it feels good. It feels fast. Um, and I told you that I was like been been gunning for a couple of segments of Diverge, mm-hmm. wasn't just getting it done. And I'm working on them. I'm getting yeah, there. You're getting there. Getting there. Moving up the board. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Thank you very much again. Um, I want to make a how to wax your chain tutorial step by step with a shopping list video. Yes. So we need to put our heads together um, and make that happen. Make it real short. Make it real clean. Make it real easy. And give people exactly because we talk about it so much. Yeah, and, uh, and I think I said Chris Howell started doing it. Yep. So yep. I mean, you know, I, I think it's um, something that we were we've been talking about for a long time, but I think I finally want to make that happen. So you know, I don't know if this is fully relatable or how Chris will take this, but his last name's Howell. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna howl at the moon. I can see it, but but he's a dirty kitten, kitten, kitten howling at the moon. I don't know if it's gonna work out too well. Ah. Uh. Um, 
What else have you been up to? I suppose. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just rolled right off that one. <laughs> I was like, ah, I didn't think about that one. I, that's it for me. I did like 150 miles last week. Yeah. Um, so not as big as the week before, but still a big week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just, just, I, it's such a weird, weird, weird time right now. Yeah. We, we went to the beach today and it felt, there was a lot of people at Assateague. So we drove over to Assateague just for the day, mm-hmm. sat on the beach for a few hours, felt really good to kind of get out, move around, you know, spend the day together. We just, you know, I went with my wife and. It, it was it was just really nice, um, but at the same time, it felt really weird mm-hmm. because it was crowded. And even though, like, when you go to the beach, you're not really close to people, especially acid. Acid is not really you're not really on top of people. But just yeah, it's pretty spread out. Being around mm-hmm. people felt really weird. We got back in the truck to come home, and just like you know, I, does that something? Do we think that was risky? And I thought about it. And I was like, not really, because you know, I think the only thing that I touched today, I was never within six feet of anybody. Besides yourself. No, I mean, the only thing I touched that other people would have touched today <laughs> was the door handle in the bathroom. Oh, you use the bathroom? That is it. Yeah, well, yeah. Wanna... That, that's it. So I feel pretty good about that. So maybe that could be a model that we could pass along to Dave to for Unpaved to do, like, you know, just... Be in the woods. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're rambling. I'm no, rambling. I'm be, sorry. You got to be polite. What have you been up to? Uh, speaking week? of peeing in the woods, so I... Um, I used to do the Watkins Park ride, um, which is out of Watkins Park, Upper Marlboro. Okay. Memorial Day, Labor Day, and literally like hundreds of people would show up to this. It was a road ride. It was like, it was like world championships. Okay. It was ridiculous. But there, there was one point when probably 150 of us rolled up to the stop sign where the 60, like, I used to always do the, like, the 60 with everyone mm-hmm. and try to keep up with like the super fast dudes when I was in shape, right. which never lasted, but you get farther on crew road every time. And then... The slow, you know, like the 20, 30 milers, the newer people would break, which is in someone's front yard. We stopped there after 20 miles and the amount of people that started trying to go and and then everyone yelling at them. Oh man, it was, was oh man, cyclists like doing their business in somebody's front yard. It's freaking so, yeah. Uh, See, that's like, man, that's so when I say pee in the woods, I joke. You can't do that. I know know that's a big thing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's problematic. Um, I, st- I but am. At- right, but right now, try to go find somewhere to go to the bathroom. <laughs> There's so many people outside. No, no, no. I was oh. going to La Plata the other oh, day yeah, to you go can't fishing, stop. and it's like I went in the gr- into the. I was like, okay, I'm going to duck in to the to the gas station. Have you ever tried to stand up and pee on your kayak? Oh yeah, I do that all the time now. Yeah, but I got I got to rinse things off. <laughs> <laughs> I get some water and I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm I'm dribbling all. <laughs> anyway, no, no I I I, tr- I went to the gas station. I went to like three places and there's nowhere to t- i was like okay well I, what you've given me no choice i'm gonna have to drive out yeah. of the plate on these little back roads and find somewhere to go yeah, you remember I, that i was telling you about the person behind the library when this first yeah, started yeah, behind yeah, the yeah, little yeah. rubbermaid shed yeah same but, thing but what, what sense does it make they tell us to wash our hands mm-hmm. and then they all close the bathrooms and when is mcdonald's and all these places going to finally open back up for somebody to sit down and eat a eat their I, I, um, I go by there on my bike sometimes. Yeah, that's a good And thing. it's breakfast, and I go get an iced tea and a little sausage burrito. Man, I kind of miss those rides, too. I know, I do. And, and But I have to sit outside on the sidewalk. And it just it's kind of like... Peasants. Why why aren't you going ahead and opening some stuff back up here? You can do it now. I, um, I could see the... Fa- so, we actually went out to dinner last night for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, But I could see how, like, if we got up... I don't know if they are. Maybe they're going to clean everything off. I feel like they can maintain that better than a fast food joint can because they got bus boys and all. Oh, probably. So probably. I can see fast food not doing that yet. Yeah, yeah, I can buy that. Dude, where'd you go? Lighthouse. Sorry, okay. it was our anniversary yesterday. No, I, I saw the picture. So from we Lighthouse, um, but I didn't. We had a re- dinner reception at that uh, in the upstairs. We rented the whole upstairs mm. for that. So we went back. I was going to do something down at Piney Point where we actually got married and blah blah blah. It just it got weird with Corona. And, yeah. I wanted to reserve the house there that we got married at, at the lighthouse, but um, you know they're a little weird in the first place. But no, we had a nice relaxing evening, and yeah, it was our first time going out. We and it was weird, like you said, it's weird. <laughs> it, it, but it's, it was like it wasn't uncomfortable no. because I didn't not feel comfortable, hmm. and it wasn't like sad. I think I finally landed on melancholy as the feeling, yeah. and that's different than being sad. Melancholy yeah. is like a sadness. Yeah, that comes from, and I think a lot of people in the gravel community are feeling that same thing. Larry, yeah, because you're you're we're supposed to be in the midst of the every other weekend, 
There should be yeah. some big gathering where you're beginning to see people and talk to people, and it's just not there. It's not there, and then it, there's all kinds missing. of political stuff going on with certain races and stuff here and there, and it's just like I, I just want to go out and ride my bike on a you know with friends. Now, have you missed? Have you missed though? Have you missed like the group riding? I, I I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Out, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I really haven't. No, I haven't. The I, people that I want to ride with, I'll go ride. Like we've ridden together a good yeah. amount of times. If I um. We kind of had this weird Sunday morning, not weird, I'm um, like, it's been like four or five times in the last month or two where it's been like me, Wes Murphy, Kenny Murphy, uh, Wes's um, girlfriend, Will, like, mm-hmm. and Jess, and some other people showed up. We just went out and rode. Yeah. I just, I haven't missed the whole big group dynamic. I've really no. enjoyed the the go hard when, I don't, I don't know, you feel like it. It's yeah. almost like... Because you're not really feel like you're training for something, mm-hmm. you're just out there riding. But a part of that is actually the effort and the suffer. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just been. Well, I did go out, and I don't even think I'm gonna check my phone now. I don't even think it saved. So I went to work Thursday, and a text Jess early is like, "I have to get out of here, <laughs> like early today." And I told Dave, "I was like, I'm leaving like at two. Uh, I was so frustrated on just multiple different things. It wasn't one thing in particular." It's one of the days where I was like, I got to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I left early and I, um, Jess actually was not feeling well. and um, She's been doing a lot more running now. So I started going out by myself and then I got Joe Oster. I was like, hey, man, why don't you leave now and come ride with me? Man, that little turd. Like, <laughs> you think you're like, all right, you, I'm the I'm the wise, smart man. Like, I'm going to wear out the young kid first. It don't work that way. So we kept, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I got him now. And if you, my I didn't even upload to Strava, and I don't really care anymore. But I, don't, I think I did under four, just under 40 miles total, and I did all of it multiple times. I did all the back road soundings, waiting uh-huh. on him, and it was like a game of keep up. And, like, my <laughs> overall <laughs> average wasn't, like, 30 miles an hour, but, man, he wore me out. Like, yeah. when you get back and your whole legs just burn and you're sore and you haven't done that like that in yeah, a while, yeah, and yeah. it's just like, and that little kid is just... Yeah, they're like, yeah. what happened? Right, yeah, that was fun. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the ride. <laughs> the rubber oh, band. God, I like, hate you. <laughs> and the next day, I'm sore at work. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was a. I probably did, you know, 1,800 feet of climbing and almost 40 miles that little turn. But I'm glad you got out. Oh yeah, it was so nice. The I'm stress glad, release yeah, that was. Yeah. Um, I've said it before. You know, I worry about you with all the uh, all of the stress right now. Of but we're working in a bike shop. I mean, that was one of those days. Yeah, where I just I was like, I gotta go. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, like I actually left at four today, you know, same, same crap in the bike industry. So they launched specialized launch, like they launched a new mountain bike today and they have 2021 bikes up with some availability. Okay. And we're starting to get bikes in for people. Can you and get a rock hopper? No. <laughs> um, so like I said, we have about 30 some on order and there's some of them that we get in. We don't know what we're getting in, but like we had a Cirrus 4.0, which is a really nice, like $1,200 carbon flat bar bike mm-hmm. it's pretty solid like we had a lady call somehow she was like her spider sense and she's like hey do you got this bike and she's from dc i'm like and i think damn she's like i think so but we have a huge excel sheet of people like we don't know if it's back ordered or what didn't have built out we had a credit card over the phone but like just as like a reserve it she came down and paid for it done sized her i was like we didn't even get put on the floor <laughs> you and, and, and you need to be able to do that yeah, right now. I was like, I keep telling all my staff, I was like, stop selling stuff. I need inventory. <laughs> like, we sold another e bike today. I got like 10 bikes left. Um, we sold like three e bikes last week. And we, oh, you never go yeah. through those. And a 61, like, $2,000 E5 Diverge that Wes ordered that. We'll, we'll talk about it later, but you know, you can't go into Walmart and buy a fish bowl. Yeah, you can't. Any it, outdoor activities. Gone. Gone. I, we probably sold, I don't want to say 20. That's probably high, but. In like a three day span, I mean, I got rid of most of my Paddle Sports inventory. Yeah, I, it's it's. And we had some lady. I got to make that phone call tomorrow, and we told her from the get go she wanted to try out three different paddle boards. I'm like, dude, you like you got to buy one like now. She's like, I want to put a deposit, so she paid for one, and we have her name on it. But she's like, I'm gonna try these other ones out, and I got to figure out what actually happened. We sold the other two boards. <laughs> oh, oops! <laughs> like, you, you know, it's one of those times where I, somebody so, comes in with cash. It's yeah, it's like it's not you, a demo. I'm for not. You holding it you know like i'm not losing two other sales you buy this board you put your money down i don't mm. want to be that guy but the amount of people still asking for uh, hopefully i kind of hope this kills the bro deal a little bit for the small businesses mm, could um and they're talking about that on the bike could. mechanic forums like could. this might finally kill the whole like competition of buying it the cheapest and 
people finally understand in the small business, yeah. um, in the backbone of that. But I'll get still, still get my deal, right, bro? Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, you, yeah, but overall, I mean, I hate no, the people I that know, I hate the people, and it sounds bad that I've never seen them before, first time. Well, can I get you know what's the best you can do? I was like, that's uh, the price. That's the, like that's the price. And you Why can not? feel confident saying that now? Yeah. Oh, I've turned away. I turned away a customer this week. He wanted like a super duper. He's like, that's six hundred dollars more than the other guy quoted me. I was like, no, I I've trained that kid, and he knows exactly how much it costs. I know what he told you. So he's trying to wiggle me, and I was like, I was like, mm. sorry, man. Uh, you know, high demand, low inventory. You mm. leave, I'll sell it tomorrow. I told him that, and you probably did. I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't be that guy, but just how like we can't do that every no. time. Not not. I was like, not in this. Honestly, guy. I've never like I don't want to be that guy. I, I don't know he. Sure, like you come in and you've been a great customer forever, and there's a lot of customers I help out. Right, you know, and well, some people. There's a lot of people that don't ask for discounts, and I might add something. Up, you know, well, you know, you 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 guys, the shop has that ambassador program, and yeah. and the ambassadors do give it's, back a lot. Yeah, and we sold know? a lot of ambassadors' bikes in the last few months. Yeah, and so, but they do a lot of work for us. Yeah, yeah. You scratch our back, we scratch yours. That's the way it works. That's the way um, it works. Yeah, I mean that's the. Same old bike industry. So we have so there's like three rock hoppers we have gotten mm. that have been damaged before. <laughs> oh jeez. The first rock hop, first 2021 we got forklift. You could definitely tell down tube. Okay. And this last one looked like a monkey went in the box and cut the hydraulic cable on the thing. I was like, <laughs> that's so perfectly cut. That was done on purpose. So I got to redo some hydraulics. Not that one I can keep and you know fix yeah. and sell. The one with the forklift and another one was. Maybe it's two or three. Or do you think maybe the box got the the cable got slit when the box was packaging or something like I that? I don't know. It was like a straight clean cut, and it's pretty low. It's not like we opened it. Uh-huh. Like we don't open one nice or anything. It was right. just something happened. I don't know. Huh, that's weird. So I just got to redo a bunch of hydraulics. No biggie. Just just adds on to my list of crap. Weird. I don't need to. Weird, weird, weird. Um, I know I rambled. That's probably you know that's about okay. It. Got anything I'm else a, going on in your world? I feel like there's a lot I always tell you about men. We'll get to it at the end. Yeah, I That'll always right. I talk a lot. That's why people stick around. I think we can uh, we can talk about the runner thing again. <laughs> they want to hear still it. pissing me off. Hear it all at the end. So I always go every week and look for some news item, and sometimes I find them and sometimes I don't. But this week, Cycling News released a list of gravel ride essentials, <laughs> and this this may be... There's no fireball in there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get um, your take on... on Because I love this back and forth of getting your reaction. They say the number one item of gravel ride essentials is... I mean, and these are just all like, duh. Uh, a jacket and additional layers. Oh... I don't know that that's essential. That's not it's essential. I mean, that's year. essential depending on where you're at and where you live. Exactly. That's not an essential piece. That's. Varies. I want. I want to go through this really quick because it's all just like, it, it's. It's yeah, almost like number two makes sense. Uh, pumps, tubes, plugs, and repair kits. Everything makes sense except for one and eight. But I'll let you go through yeah. them. Um, tools. Well, of course you're carrying. It's what. That's my point. Is yeah. that this is like. I, I They're don't just know. filling in an article to get. I, I feel like the article was it's, simply clickbait. Because when you go to the article, all it does is have Amazon deals to click over to individual items in each category. Yeah. And I guess that's just what's kind of burned me. It's like, hey, give me some new information, some new knowledge, something that I can use, something that I didn't know before. But if you just tell me that I need to carry a jacket, I need to carry a pump, I need to carry a tube, I need to carry tools, I need to carry food, I need to have a GPS device, which I don't know is an essential thing or not. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's an essential. Do you carry thing. storage? <laughs> is that, um, I guess that's a saddlebag. Yeah, they were saying storage. Unless you have a diverge. With so, the well, you you, you've got to have somewhere to put your GPS device and your tools and your pumps. And I think that was their thing: is if you're gonna you, you I, I really think what they were after here is that you know, gravel bikes are all about the bags and carrying stuff on the bike. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> like, how many bags did I purge so, earlier this year? That that I think may be the only legitimate like actual gravel essential Mm -hmm. item on the entire list and emergency items and luxury items now their whole point with luxury items was um if there's something you can carry on the bike to make your trip fun you should do it i can actually get behind that yeah anyway i just i just thought it was like this clickbait article and it tweaked me when i saw it so i put it on here to talk about it so i don't know what's luxury I don't know. I did say fire. I guess fireball luxury. So Lonzo was asking me about that today. <laughs> what fireball? He's like, what's that? What's that thing? And now I see him everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He's like, 
uh, you can't not see them anymore. No. And I was trying to. Exp- I was like, man, a lot- they're horrible. I was like, I. I've tried to not look for them, and everywhere I go, I see fireball models. They're they're uh, they're all over the place, uh, everywhere you go. I have one quick thing I didn't add. So a sure. couple of my shop employees who both have salsa journeymans, different two different builds, newer. Well, Josh had his last year. Justin is a new newer kid into riding. And on July fourth and fifth or something, they are both going to do the Gap and the CNO in two days. And what pisses me off is they're the kind of kids where. Justin is like a collegiate level swimmer. Like he's getting a he's getting a scholarship for swimming, and Josh is he's like ultra marathon runner kid. That, that's a hundred and sixty five back to back. What pisses me off is they're the kind of kids they're probably gonna do it fine. They're no, young. No, no. no. Jo- Josh can go out and do it. I don't have a problem. Justin hasn't been riding a bike for a while. Two days, one hundred and sixty five miles back to back. Yep. No, ain't gonna happen. Josh, I have faith in Justin. Nope. Justin needs saddle time. I was like, dude, I know you could do it. Which way are they going? North to south. Okay. Well, at least they're going the right way. Because Josh has been picking my brain on gear. I was like, I'm, like I don't have as much experience as you well, think. To do that many miles, he doesn't <laughs> no. really need to worry about gear because you're not going to no, have time he, to like, sleep. He only anyway. wants like a 10 liter. Like he was asking me about Apodura and stuff. Okay. Like he wants a very. He's, Josh is an excellent bike uh, backpacker. Uh-huh. Um, well, and he, he's going to keep his stuff minimal. What are their dates? I think it's in like a week or two. Next 4th yeah, of July they, weekend. They're, they're close the longest day. So they'll yeah, have a lot was, of daylight. Um, I don't know. I got to talk to Josh. I haven't actually talked to Josh. So Josh was figuring this out and he was picking my brain and he was at paddles. I had to work paddle sports for a little bit the other day. What accident. time are they going to start? I'm gonna, I'll find out more tomorrow. He just texted me. He's like, all okay. right, I have it set. Like me and Justin are doing this. Like, and Josh is pretty hard set on that. Let's let's I so I want to give them like my GoPro and I was like I want I want Josh to be like give me short little clips I'm gonna make something out of this, um, <laughs> well, but screw that why don't we go follow him I know <laughs> in a um, car in a car in a car there. yeah so Josh was looking up some bike packing videos and stuff and I had to find the video he sent me a screenshot and there's some jagaloon and he did give me credit but he pulled a lot of video footage of the salsa Fargo video I made. No I'm up, way. I'm up to 14,000 views on that. No. So he was using some <laughs> clips on that of like where I had it in the uh, little gravel pit. Uh-huh. And I was just kind of doing like B-roll of it. Uh, he used a lot of it and he gave me credit. But I'm almost oh. up to like 14,000 views on that video now. That is so I think cool. I got three or 4,000 from that guy's recent video. Nice. Um, I did <laughs> want to bring cool. it up for... So I'd like to come back to this next week before they do it. Okay, yeah. yeah and yeah. then I want to follow it up after they do it. Oh, this, this is... That's actually... We're brilliant. talking like an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old who are like... <laughs> Pretty well in shape, but and Josh has ridden a lot. Dude, those are big days, though. Josh, I mean, Josh went out and did like seven the other day just to do it. And I you know, know Josh is working up his saddle time. Austin, Austin is Austin was in the same boat. Yeah, Austin was the exact same way, and he went out to do the the longest day, the yeah, the canal the in one day. Nutrition always killed Austin. Yeah, I told, yeah. and Josh has been paying a lot of attention to nutrition. Yeah, um, ah. but like just Justin saddle time, and Justin Justin's all gung ho. He's got a new journeyman and. He already wants to upgrade Ooh. to like a warbird and uh, big days, man. Big so days. So I wanted days. to uh, let half of our uh, listener base uh, in on that one. We should ride sections with them. We <laughs> yeah. should send like Ooh, Ted out. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Well, so um, I I referenced earlier that that Chuck that bought a T-shirt says and uh, email and and I I I was blown away when I get to the inventory of his bikes. I want your reaction. So, hi, my name is Chuck, and I'm a cycleholic. Yeah. <laughs> Last spring, I signed up for the Michigan Coast to Coast before I even had a gravel <laughs> bike. Hey, that's the way you do it. It was my first gravel race, and my only goal was to finish by midnight. Ended up finishing at 11.38 nice. p.m. Bravo. Applause. Had a blast, and have signed up for more gravel events, if they ever happen again. My current fleet, specialized sump, stump jumper, full suspension 26, a Rock Hopper 29, a Rock Hopper Evo 27.5, a Tri Cross, a Fat Boy 26. DJ, what's that? DJ. Oh no, um, there should be a comma. Fat Boy and a P26 Dirt Jumper is two different bikes. Ah, Fat Boy and a P26 Dirt Jumper, a Salsa Journeyman, a Storm Chaser Single Speed. Oh, that's like Justice. And a Kink, which is a BMX brand. That's a 20 inch BMX and a Diamondback. Topanga oh, from that's 1991. A yeah. I, I worked sold, on those. I sold Diamondback Topangas. In I, 1991? Yes, I did. Oh, I was one years old. Yes, I did. 
uh, back in the late 80s or early 90s when I was working in a bike shop. I, I remember the Diamondback Topanga. In fact, my first road bike was uh, uh, Centurion, which was the oh, yeah. Diamondback's road version. Was it Raleigh Centurion? Uh, no, it was Centurion was the brand. Oh, I'm thinking that. Centurion. Um, and my yeah. first mountain bike was a Diamondback ascent rigid mm-hmm. i still have both of those bikes hanging in the garage hoarder but he's oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he says i still ride that 91 topanga but that is i didn't even take the count um that's a that's a crap ton of bikes dude ridiculous um i found your podcast by searching gravel bikeling 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 <laughs> so you should make that a new word i found your podcast by searching gravel biking on SoundCloud and have binged the whole oh, thing. Man. I'm sorry. We apologize. Apologies, major apologies. Uh, while working, your show is one of the top for me. The three of you play off each other great, are entertaining and informative. Humid Farts is my best laugh episode for sure. P.S. <laughs> I'm a troll from below the Mighty Mac in Michigan. <laughs> was Humid Farts with Phil? <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, geez. Yeah, I love yeah. that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you uh, again, Chuck, for uh, buying a t-shirt and the stickers and sending that great email. Uh, keep it up, buddy. Uh, man, yeah. I think you need a few more bikes, though. I think you need to you know, work a couple on that. Of, um, <laughs> we should, when we hit 100, we should do like our top 10 countdown, like a TV show one. Yeah. Episodes. Top episodes. Humid. Oh, that means you'd have to go back and listen to them. Humid Farts was one of my favorites. So Ab- we'll, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we should go back. You know, I keep all the footage. I keep all oh, everything. Yeah. I keep everything. So I've got all individual tracks. I've got yeah. everything. We could go back and pull some stuff. And um, a, a one more week again without Wes. Wes has some scheduling issues. So we're working out how in the world we're going to make that all. I texted our substitute. Come together and not exactly sure how that but we're going to work that out so at some point in the great scheme of things um we will have west back in the fold i think we just gotta maybe gotta work through that scheduling west might not know what a bike is by the time (laughs) this is the only thing that kept him somewhat related to the bike industry (laughs) working in it he doesn't ride it no i mean now yeah now he's not riding his bike uh so that's that what's going on in strava club all right, so top 100, did you uh Google? I did it, yes, oh, I did it. Man, did it. our boy Justin yep. uh, came in as our middle slot, but I put him first because he's uh, number yeah. one. Well, look at um, those miles, too. 261.4, somewhere, I don't even, like, Justin rides all that. I don't know where Justin's actually from. South well, Carolina. I, I, Is he from he, North he, Carolina? He, no, he's from South Carolina. He's, uh, got, he's got the South tack. I, I just put somewhere in the woods of South Carolina. We all know, <laughs> yeah. He rides all over, and he, he does some cool rides. Oh yeah. Um not to out be done by a Carolina, we have a folk from Lancaster PA, David Reinhardt, which I feel like I know David. Or see him, mm. whatever. I don't know. I looked at the Strava profile. I gotta I stock him. I don't I don't remember. Uh hundred and fifty one point three. And then Ted Stoddard, another Ted, um, from Fort Worth, Texas at hundred and fifty nine point nine. Score. Big miles this week. I know. We um do you realize and that the top 100 every week goes up a couple miles at a time. Yeah, it yeah. never. It's a gradual tick. It just it just goes up like by three or four, and then oh, all of a sudden you'll see man. a jump. Speaking of jumps, but we did you, to break into that. You need 147.3. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I had 47 total last week. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, give or take about 40 miles. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we we're up to 595 from 589. Closing in on that 600 yeah. number. We need to go kick some people out of there. Yeah. Get them out. Get them out. No, we should do a um, Strava giveaway with a t-shirt if you're a small or extra small. <laughs> <laughs> you're a crazy size when we hit. Let's do that. We talk about doing stuff like that all the time. I always forget. I, I got to figure out some way to actually remember that stuff and, and do it during the week. Um, if you want to add, I know we have more listeners than Strava members, but maybe not everyone does Strava. Strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash gravel travel dirt. Oh, Thank yeah. you, everybody. For participating, yeah. that's fun. I, I'm glad we started doing that ages mm-hmm. and ages. We've been doing that for a long time now. What Strava Club? Oh yeah, it's we, been. We started that way early, super early. Yeah. Um. Dead well, air. Uh, dead air. Dead I don't. Air. We don't. I, I was trying to think. Speaking if we, of I, dead I air, I missed something, but I did. I know. I feel like we got to that really quick. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I can keep rambling if you want it. No, that's I'm okay. That's okay. That's but, okay. But uh, we have some good this or that. We we need well, to speaking of dead air. <laughs> I, I got um a a message from. Remember we talked about McLean Farm gravel grinder. 
out in Ohio. Oh yeah. Um, I got a message that they are going forward this year. He he was, was like, "We're doing it. We're we're figuring a way. We're going to make it happen." And he was Y'all um, curious, wanting to get on the uh, on the podcast. So I think we need to come up with some some folks to to like that that are going out there. You know, I also thought about um, asking Larry because Larry's done. He just did a, a cross event. Oh yeah. Um, and he's he's doing a couple more. And you know we've talked about Larry a lot. I think it'd be fun to have some listeners on some some Larry talk. Yeah, Larry. Why don't we have Larry come down and spend Larry the night? Larry time. Larry time. Actually, we could probably tell Larry to come down tomorrow. You drive down, <laughs> sleep on my he, like set up tent on my couch or uh, camp on my couch when I have, well Wes was here that time. But um, uh, you want to go ahead and do this or that? Oh, we got we do we got good we got this do. or that's this week. I do want. I don't know if I've stated it. I don't care if unpaved is a thing or not this year. I'm still mm-hmm. going up that weekend. Okay, so that that's a like, weekend yeah, that's on the calendar. I'm going. And we talked about doing the um Good. I'm gonna call it the Casey ride. Yeah. Um and, and there was like some emails. I was texting David flying around. I didn't uh, I got I got mixed up with work. Okay. When do we want to do that? I want to be a part of that. I don't know if I was in, you included me on the text, so I'm assuming that I was a part of that. Oh, ride you're always adventure. part of Okay. I, I, I did know. do that. I did oh just that one ride I didn't invite anyone to uh in VA last month. No 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 that's you you can have that. You can but, have that, um, but but I was included on the text chain. Oh yeah, because I so want to go up for a long weekend, and I do want to fish a little bit. Uh, some trout. I'm water. down with that. I am going uh, trout. Fi- oh, talk about the fishing one. Not yet. No. Um, yes, I yeah, just, we'll, I, we'll I want to make that clear. I am still unpaving this year. So <laughs> that weekend, which I can't even remember, it's one weekend in October. I'm look for the woolly worm, uh-huh. and I'm going to ride my bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So that's the thing. Whether people want to or not. Um, Join us, you know we're gonna be there. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm really curious to see how Dave um, unravels all of that. Unravels like, unpaved. Yeah, I, I. I think it's. I think he's got. I, Dave's such a creative guy. Yeah. I know that he's got a. He he's might. got a thought process in some way that it'll. It'll. He probably has a couple of this or that's in his head. And, yeah, it'll mm, come together and yeah, it'll. It'll for that. It'll be something. I, d- I highly doubt it will be the same format hmm. of last year, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a thing, though. I think there's going to be something you can oh, hang your hat for me. on. <laughs> yeah, it's something you're going to be able to hang your hat on and say, this was unpaved this year, and I was there, and I did it. Yep. Whether whether or not there's a huge party, whether or not there's a festive festival, whether there's any of that stuff mm-hmm. it probably remains to be seen. It's probably highly unlikely. But I think if you want to say you were a part of Unpaved in 2020, the year of Rona, I think you're going to have an option to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. That's that's my gut speaking right there. Um, so oh. I, I think that there's enough creative juice up there in Pennsylvania that's going to make that happen. Hey, let's oh, do this or that. What do you get think? on train of this or that. This or that. Um, item number one this week, deadhead or parrothead, Joey? Ooh. I know I wrote this, but I wrote this because I don't, I don't know what I would... I'm gonna go, I mean, I love Jimmy Buffett, but also I do love a good dead song. Could you put them together? A dead, I feel like a dead I'm parrot head. Par- <laughs> <laughs> a dead parrot. <laughs> I feel like I'd be more. I would enjoy a Jimmy Buffett concert over a Grateful Dead concert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, like both, both. I don't know. I, you might have to be on a lot of acid to do a dead concert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th- I Where think, yeah. I think if you yeah. you could play with some paraphernalia and drink a margarita and have fun at a Jimmy Buffett concert <laughs> and and wa- and wake up and go to work the next day. I don't know about that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I would I would definitely say I am more in the parrot head camp. Yeah. I do enjoy. I like the. I'm not super into the dead. I I, I do not, love the whole. But, um, yeah. yeah, that's cool. I, I I I would definitely say that that I would probably land more in the the parrot head arena. I mean, I freaking love Jimmy Buffett though. Yeah. As a businessman, oh, he's, he's a brilliant. genius. Freaking he's brilliant. a whole. He'd even I, I, I've been watching a lot of Jimmy Buffett documentaries and stuff. He just, <laughs> I'm going to take him paddleboarding and fly fishing one day soon. Oh, there you go. Uh, item number two Ooh. on this or that. This is fantastic. This is horrible. No, this is... We might not be allowed to go this year because of this one. <laughs> now, I know there's been a lot of... Dave sent out his survey on, on <laughs> what kind of like rest stops things would look like. So, I have, a, I have another not question. Like this. Unpaved rest stop food. Would you rather eat a small can of cat food or two rotten tomatoes? <laughs> I chickle myself. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'd rather... I hate tomatoes by themselves. <laughs> oh no, I love tomatoes. You got I've only been eating tomatoes like 
uh, little cherry tomatoes. That Have are you ever had cat shish food? Kebabs. Have you ever had cat food? See, I feel like I've seen people eat cat food, and it's not bad. Ooh, cat food is horrible. Oh, oh, it happens. I, you know what? Apocalypse. We're close. Pandemic. You know. Yeah, you might have to eat a squirrel or something. I think I'd rather eat cat food than squirrel. Or I'd rather eat. Ah, that's that just grosses me out thinking about this one. Which one though? Mm. Cat food or rotten tomatoes? I mean, rotten tomatoes just sounds disgusting. And it would be moldy too. They'd have no, like I a mean, little cat food. white. I got mold. cat food. On. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> I think you could cut away the rotten parts of I'd the tomatoes. I'd have to be drunk for either of those. <laughs> One thing about rotten tomatoes is, you know, they look like they're normal, and uh-huh. then you go pick it up, and it's like oh, like your finger just dives right into it, and it's like squishy and, and gross on the inside. Um, but basically, spaghetti sauce is a rotten tomato. It's just squished oh, up. You changed it up now. So I would probably go, I don't think I could eat cat food. Cat food just smells horrible. I don't, I don't even know why cats eat cat food. I don't even food. know why you wrote this down. <laughs> Oh. Okay, third item on this or that. <laughs> Would you rather do one huge, one huge, huge event everyone goes to with a 50% chance that you're going to walk away with <laughs> coronavirus, but it is the best riding ever, or do a bunch of smaller events that are only so-so but you only have a 6.9% chance of catching Rona. When I say the event is so-so, that's like a 50% hard top, 50% gravel. So one huge event where everyone's there and it's amazing riding, but you got a one in two shot of walking away with the Rona or a bunch of so-so smallers and a very low chance of walking away with Rona. 6.9. I know what you did there. Um, That's tough. I mean... When you you do one of those rides, it's just magical. Mm-hmm. I could just be one of those carriers of Rona. In the, was it a um, <laughs> the asymptomatic? Yeah, you could be asymptomatic. That's um, right. I think your answer changes on this the closer you are to the uh, the <laughs> age of like like it's going to be your demise. Um, man, so, 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 there's some huge events that just aren't fun. But if you have like if it's just everything is perfect, because mm-hmm. you get to the smaller ones too. It's you know. Tight knit community, but I'm gonna go with the huge with like really dream gravel. Really, yeah, I some, would definitely some go. Some, and I'm probably riding a, like a Creo doing some climbing and just <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Yeah, <laughs> look at my e bike, my e gravel bike. Which I, I, there's no way, there's too many unknowns with this whole Rona stuff. Yolo, way too many unknowns. Well, it's easy to answer because it's not. I know it's not real, but the cat food one seemed pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, I think, I would definitely do this. smaller events. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I'd be fine with the smaller events than than a one and two shot of <laughs> walking away with a Rona. Yeah, but I could be that one that doesn't get it, not the two. But it's if you were to do it, one of us would have Corona. That's right. If we were both to go, and I'd have to take the bullet because I'm younger. Because you're, you're younger, my immune system. I'm different. closer to the age of demise. Yeah. So, but that way we can still be friends, and one of us wouldn't be. My uh, you know, my six expiration feet. date is quickly approaching. Yeah. So um, mine. I'm thirty. Last <laughs> item this week on this, this or that. <laughs> I, this one seems kind of easy. Would you rather live in an amusement park or live in a zoo? I live in a zoo right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd want to switch it up. And I'd be <laughs> afraid of both. I just you say amusement park, I think it's Zombie Land. When I think of amusement park, I think of crazy clowns. That's what I'm saying. Like, cre- I bet you an amusement park is a creepy place at night. I feel like if I live in a zoo, I can, you know, I can go um, cuddle up with some cool animals. I don't know. Yeah, but where would you live in the zoo? You'd have to live in like the gift shop. I live in the monkey house. <laughs> 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 I got a little red butt cheeks anyway. A little baboon. <laughs> um, I got a little red butt cheeks. <laughs> uh, that's a podcast. That's an episode title. <laughs> if I've ever heard one, I gotta write that uh, down. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a zoo would be cool, minus like you know, like the lions and tigers. And I, I feel. I, I guess that's know. basically. Um, what was that show that just came out? We live in a zoo. Carol Baskins. Oh, Tiger, Tiger King. King. Yeah. They basically do live in a zoo, don't yeah. they? Don't even think about that when yeah, I put this I don't, one together. I don't want to turn into that though. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, live I in a zoo that, though. No, I think that's what you'd become. I think I don't want to become that. I want to be like the cool zookeeper, like in a Disney movie. Oh, <laughs> I don't think that's a possibility. I would definitely though think I'd want to live in a zoo over living in an amusement park. Clowns, clowns. I hate clowns. 
clowns at night? I hate clowns. And clowns at night. Ugh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I want to no. walk around with a little spider monkey no. with me all the time. No, no, not doing it. I would live in a zoo in a heartbeat, even if I had to live in the gift shop, which is a miserable place at a zoo, in my opinion. But I think a zoo's a miserable money. place, but it'd be cooler than the amusement park. I've never really been a big zoo fan. I don't know what it is. It's like I mean, part of me feels bad. The other part is like I think they're kind of depressing. They are. You know, there's these animals that belong, and I know know, there's like somewhere else. I don't know when I get into all the. And there's some that are like you know they do a lot of rehabilitation and stuff. Like the National Aquarium does that. Yeah, I can get Um, behind that. I get man, I would live in the aquarium in Baltimore. Yeah, that's like a dream of mine. That'd be cool. I used to uh, when I was a lonely single man. We call this PJ Prejess, like you know BC. (laughs) <laughs> like I had a Joey PJ because I worked in Annapolis so there'd be some days that I would go up to the aquarium and I would just sit in there for a while especially you get down low in the shark area it's expensive and it's got like, I, I used to get a um, I used to get a family membership I would use my sister as my um, so okay. she had the same last name it was like 70 bucks and it was a year I know it's it oh I got my money's worth out of that I know when, when we would take the kids up there you know have mm-hmm. two kids and yeah, hundred something four, dollars oh my gosh more than that it's like 160 or 200 yeah. bucks to take, and then they get into the gift shop and it's like no I say I would because my sister would go all the time and then um, she would take my other pass for uh, yeah, that works that works friend, yeah, anyone could go and then you get discounts on other stuff but oh I used it because you get like really cheap parking when you um, when you go to pay for parking, you put your zoo thing in there, or your um, ticket in there, and you get like $2 parking. So could you actually use the parking just to go to the Inner Harbor? Yeah. Oh, so you wouldn't have to necessarily go to the aquarium. You could just get no, cheap parking. No, but I, I love the aquarium. Nice. I love fish. Um, anything else before we shut this thing down? Uh, just sh- I'll just keep talking. Shut it down. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. That was like an uh, abrupt. I usually like plan for you to have some stuff. And, and and I just always have stuff. I interrupt. I, I talk. Well, some people like it. Some people hate it. That's okay. It, it is what it is. We're doing our thing. We do we're need here. to. We're not talking politics. We're not talking too much Corona unless it's in a goofy way. You know what we do need to do? What do we do? A, um, also, we have no no one's phone called about our t shirt. Um, I think we should have it. Maybe we should do it on Patreon. Mm-hmm. We should have a random list of phone numbers. Because it's, it's nice having a third this or that person. Mm-hmm. If we're not going to have Wes and maybe. Um, Old, oh. old prior will be our regular. Oh, I see and, what you're saying. You know, we could we could say you know because tonight's a little bit later, but say we start at seven, it might be around eight o'clock. You, you just, might get we, a random phone call, random phone call, like a phone and, friend. Yeah. So if you're on our Patreon list, we'll do it Patreon only. Oh, that's brilliant! Joe. I need to make a Patreon post. Score. I you need to do that. Huh, can I write that down? I, I, this is what I'm saying. I forget everything. I know. I need to do it. I have so much. Maybe it's a good idea. I don't. See, so here we go again. Be brilliant, it. though. When I, I told you, I was like, I'll drive to work. I'll be at work. I'm like, I want to talk about this in the podcast. Then we'd have a three hour episode if I keep talking. Oh, that's okay. But I, 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 there's a lot that. of good content in my head. That, um, that is a great idea, though. I love that now. idea. Peace. Email it to yourself. Text it to I'm yourself. I'm doing my Apple like, notes. You know what I'm going to do? Somebody needs to email us Joey's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that because someone like Ted will. <laughs> Ted will have like a freaking spreadsheet. We'll go back to the spreadsheets. <laughs> Stuff Joey uh, said he was going to do, and it's probably huge, but it hasn't followed through with. Somebody out there may actually be keeping that list. Yeah. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening to this episode of Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. This is a purely listener supported podcast by some of the most heartfelt, wonderful people there are out there. There just really are. Yeah. Those, those people that keep we got this a cool going. listener base. Oh, man, it's amazing. Um, just, just, um, incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our little red butts. Um, our show can be found wherever you find your favorite podcasts. How can people contact us? Joey, are you playing uh, with a knife over there? I always, this is like my fidget spinner. Like it just, <laughs> oh my God. Like, thank you, Mr. Gerber. <laughs> I do carry a knife every day with me to work. Uh, Comes in handy. Um, GravelTravelDirt.com, which um, we didn't talk about our gravel dive I haven't digest done, yet, I, I haven't but we got to dig into that more. Yeah, I got to dig into that. We've been morning. working a lot. Um, our Instagram is at MidAtlanticGTD, and then our phone number is 410-231-3850. And I'm going to say that again so you can write it down and actually call us. There you go. 410-231-3850. One more time, 410 410- <laughs> two three one three eight five zero uh leave us a voicemail and i will check this hashtag when it's uh 
We yep. need to get a phone call before we go back to checking hashtags yeah. again. <laughs> How's that? We're yeah. not checking the hashtag anymore until somebody leaves us Was our last voice phone up. call like Dennis left Dennis, us a little with yeah, the ukulele? Dennis is wonderful little ukulele. Uh, Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in Joey's Kitchen. Uh, I think we're back to a normal, at least until second wave. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) There was 12 states with spikes this weekend. Thanks for riding along with us this week. Until next time, do good, be nice, go slow, respect others, and above it all, stay healthy, folks. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Bye.